Germany's last ace. This is the name by which this pilot is known. While many of the best German pilots were shot down and lost in battle, this pilot survived all the battles in which he flew, despite being shot down eight times. For those who do not yet know who I'm talking about, I'm obviously referring to Gunther Rahl. Gunther Rahl was a highly decorated German military aviator and officer during World War II. He was one of the most successful fighter pilots of all time, with 275 aerial victories, the third highest total of any pilot in history. Rahl was born on March 10, 1918, in Gaggenau, Germany. He was the son of a school teacher and grew up in a small town in the Black Forest region. From an early age, Rahl was fascinated by aviation and would often watch planes fly overhead. He decided that he wanted to become a pilot and began training at a local glider club. In 1936, at the age of 18, Rahl joined the German Air Force, which was known as the Luftwaffe at the time. He was initially trained as a bomber pilot, but his true passion was for fighter aircraft. He was eventually able to transfer to the fighter pilot program and began training on the Heinkel HE-51 and the Messerschmitt Bf-109, a popular German fighter aircraft. In 1939, Rahl was assigned to the 1st Squadron of Jagdgeschwader 52, JG-52, which was a fighter wing in the Luftwaffe. Still being a young pilot, Rahl's first combat experience was on the Western Front of the War. In 1940, Rahl helped lead JG-52 in support of the invasion of Belgium in the Battle of France. He scored his first win on May 12th that year, as he shot down a Hawk 75 around the south of France. That victory came when Rawl saw three of his French fighters engage German reconnaissance planes at 26,000 feet. He jumped in and attacked them, driving off multiple aircraft and even shooting down one. Afterwards, Rawl claimed he got lucky during his first dogfight, as the Hawk 75 was the weaker aircraft that was the model for his P-36 fighter, and Rawl got hit by a lot of rounds of bullets himself. Not long after the Battle of France, Rawl's unit was in the early stages of the Battle of Britain, taking major losses. The Battle of Britain took place between July and October 1940 and was the first major campaign to be fought entirely by air forces. The battle began with German bombing raids on British shipping convoys in coastal towns. The Royal Air Force, RAF, was initially caught off guard, but quickly regained control of the skies. With all the casualties, Rawl felt the dark omens of the battle and attributed these losses to the flawed tactics of tying the 109s as escorts to the slow-moving Ju-87 Stukas. Despite the heavy casualties in his wing, Rawl was appointed as a squadron leader at the age of 22, displaying great leadership skills and earning the respect of his fellow pilots. He also served in the Balkans campaign in April and May of 1941, where his actions helped Axis powers have success in quickly conquering most of the Balkans. Over a short period of time, Rawl established himself as one of the most successful pilots in the Luftwaffe. He was even awarded the Iron Cross Second Class for his achievements during the Battle of Britain. Several months later, he was transferred to Greece, where he would kill Soviet bombers without fighter escort for his second, third, and fourth kills. He would defeat a Soviet fighter on August 4, 1941 for his fifth win, earning him an ace by the late fall 1941. After gaining proficiency and experience in the 109, Rawl increased his kill total quickly, achieving 35 victories as he began to outperform adversary aircraft. Unfortunately for him, on November 28, 1941, things would turn for the worse. He was on a mission near the city of Rostov, where he would go on to defeat an I-16 fighter for his 36th victory. Nevertheless, after that, he relaxed and watched the blazing aircraft crash to the ground. A Soviet fighter slipped up behind him, striking his 109 hard, severely damaging the engine. He was over enemy territory at the time, and he was wary of being captured, given the negative perception of the Soviet treatment of German prisoners of war. He turned around and made an effort to return his damaged aircraft to safe ground. He would successfully cross the lines, but his fighter would need to crash land. Rawl suffered serious injuries and was rendered unconscious during this violent landing. His jet might have caught fire and burned him inside if things had turned out differently. Fortunately for him, this was not the case, and his jet would crash, leaving him inside, seriously injured, but still alive. Later, a German tank crew would stop by and free the unconscious pilot from the debris. 
Eventually, he would regain consciousness in a hospital where x-rays would show that he had fractured his back three times. The doctors informed him that his career as a pilot was over at that point. Rawl was essentially paralyzed and his outlook was dim at best. Rawl nevertheless overcame the odds and made an astonishing comeback. Less than a year later, he would rejoin the battle and return to the front, but it would not be his last close encounter with death. Not long after, Rawl was a squadron commander and had shot down over 100 enemy aircraft. He was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross for his achievements in combat. This was one of the highest honors that could be bestowed on a German serviceman during World War II. Following up on his success, Rawl was given command of the three group JG-52 in 1943. By the time his unit was ready to help the Battle of Kursk in the spring of 1943, Rawl had shot down 30 more aircraft. It was a worrying development that in the first week of May, Gunther Rawl would actually shoot down a supermarine Spitfire piloted by the Soviet Union. The Luftwaffe on the Eastern Front had been mostly engaged in combat against lesser aircraft, such as the I-16 and P-39 up until this time. The Spitfire, however, was a fair opponent for the Messerschmitt Bf 109 and was not a portent of doom for the German forces. Because of this, he was told to keep this win to himself when he told his superiors about the kill in order to maintain the unit's morale. Rawl also noted that the Soviet fighters' tactics seemed to be getting better. Results became apparent shortly. On July 9th, a dogfight in which the German ace took a lot of damage prompted him to make another crash landing. It was a far better landing than his first one because he was able to bring it down gently and escape from this one. He would have been officially shot down in battle twice before this. Eventually, Rawl was awarded the Oak Leaves to the Knight's Cross for his actions during the Kursk campaign. Despite his early successes as a pilot, Gunther Rawl and the rest of the Luftwaffe faced increasingly difficult challenges as the war progressed. The Allies, particularly the U.S., began to develop new tactics such as deploying long-range escort fighters to counter the German air power. This put a lot of pressure on the Luftwaffe, which was already stretched thin by that point in the war. This situation was made even more dire as the Allies began to target the German oil production facilities. The bombing of these sites had a major impact on the German war effort as it severely limited their ability to produce and transport fuel. In 1944, Rawl was shot down another time and got seriously injured, but there's not much to find about this incident. Rawl returned to combat in 1945 and continued to rack up victories. He was shot down again in April of that year and was captured by the Americans. They held him as a prisoner of war until 1947. He faced harsh conditions and uncertainty during his captivity, but was eventually released after the war's end. This experience had a profound impact on him and likely influenced his later vocal criticism of the Nazi regime and his advocacy for peace. In 1956, Rawl joined the German Air Force again when it was re-established as part of the West German military. He held various command positions, including the position of Commander of the Tactical Air Force Command and retired in 1974 with the rank of General. After his retirement, Rawl remained active in veterans' organizations and was a sought-after speaker on the topic of military history. He also wrote several books about his experiences as a pilot, including Rawl, the Autobiography of a Fighter Ace, which was published in 1978. Rawl passed away on October 4, 2009, at the age of 91. Rawl's legacy is still remembered by many, not only by veterans, but also by aviation enthusiasts and historians. He is considered one of the most successful fighter pilots of all time, and his 275 aerial victories stand as a testament to his skill and bravery. He is a true legend in the world of aviation, and his legacy will be remembered for many years to come.